what's up welcome back to another live stream here on free will photos today we are talking about keyboard shortcuts and keyboard shortcuts are very important if you want to move quickly through different windows inside of on one photo raw and i use a series of them so what we're going to do is look at what standard shortcuts come with on one photo raw and then some of the keyboard shortcuts that I'll recommend you actually change. Now, if you hear my voice cracking or anything, for some reason in the winter, I get some pretty bad allergies, uh, like whenever the seasons change. So summer and winter, my voice just goes elsewhere. Uh, so please just excuse that. But let's go ahead and dive into the computer. And... There we go. All right. So <clears throat> here we are inside of on one photo raw and really quickly, just going to get right into it to change the keyboard shortcuts. You'll come up to edit and then keyboard shortcuts. All right. Now I have all of mine expanded here, and this is actually a custom set of shortcuts that I made. Anytime that you see reset over here on the right hand side of the screen or of the shortcut window, that means I personally uh, made that preset. Let me see. I can't make it any larger. So hopefully this is coming through well enough that, you know, everyone can see it and, and read through it. Uh, but the deal here is all of these shortcuts allow me to do things inside of on one. Let me showcase it so that way you can understand and appreciate the power of a shortcut. So let's just open up this photo right here. This is of a model that I photographed at um, the build conference. So we'll let that think itself through. And then once it's done analyzing, I'm just going to throw Brilliance AI on here and uh, we'll jump through a few different tabs. So we'll let Brilliant say, I think itself through. And, you know, this is just the beauty of working in Photo Raw 2024. You get this ability to edit an image fairly quickly. And I'm just pulling down on the color here because I actually enjoyed the color the way that it was. Uh, and I might even pull down on Brilliance AI because it looked like it darkened the image. And I wanted this image to be a little bit brighter. So if I come over to the local tab and we'll just go ahead and create an adjustment and I'll showcase how this can all kind of uh, help you with a keyboard shortcut. Now, I will note I'm using an Elgato Stream Deck. Let me see if I can hold it up here without completely messing stuff up. So I'm using an Elgato Stream Deck and on the stream deck, you might be able to see some of the uh, the keyboard shortcuts that I use regularly, especially when it comes to editing. I use those shortcuts by pushing those buttons and I'll kind of show you that. So if you're interested in a stream deck and how you could use it, it's a really simple device to set up. I promise you don't have to be a technical expert. And it saves you loads of time when you're looking for certain hotkeys and you can't remember a bunch of keyboard shortcuts in your brain. You just put them to a little button. You push that button and it triggers that shortcut for you. It's super helpful. Another tool that I also use, and you know what? It's probably easier to showcase this if I go here. So yeah, let's go back here. And the other tool that I use is a Torbox Neo. Now I've talked about this before on the channel and this is one of my favorite tools to use. It sits at my left hand and all of the common controls like resizing the brush, making it bigger or smaller. I use this, uh, deleting certain things. I use this, uh, to zoom in and out on an image. I use this like, all of the things that I really want to be able to do, I can put them as a macro or something that's programmed onto this particular device. 
and then trigger it. And that's the real beauty of having keyboard shortcuts and some of these uh, combination devices or these uh, devices that allow you to map keyboard shortcuts to them. And at the press of a button, you are actually doing whatever that is. So if you see me, and for some reason, why is my tour box not working? There we go. I don't know why I didn't, why it wasn't working uh, before and seems to only want to work when I have this window open. So I'm going to leave it open and we'll hit command Z there to undo that. All right. Let me just close this layer properties box or I'm sorry, the masking properties box because that is not necessary. And I got to move some stuff around. Sorry. Uh, normally, the tour box doesn't need me to have a window open. But for some reason today, I have to have a particular window open and it covers some stuff. Anyhow, with that being said, uh, I'm going to go ahead and just paint over her face. And this puts that exposure or that negative exposure over the model here. And... That's probably not the best paint job, but I just want to show you why or how keyboard shortcuts can help. So let's say I painted that on one area, but I actually wanted the opposite or the inverse. Yesterday when I was going over masking, you seen me hit the invert button. Well, I have a keyboard shortcut that allows me to invert. So now I made this negative exposure all the way around the outside at the press of a button. And then I can press that button again and it goes back there. But what I can also do is I can copy this mask and we'll come over to effects and we'll do something like really, really crazy, like a uh, we'll go with a vintage because vintage really does shine through. And I'm not on any of my or I'm not in the actual masking properties. And you're going to watch me. I'm just going to push the button here, which is right there. I'm going to push that and then watch what happens on the screen. Just like that, I pasted that mask into on one. And then I can also, pushing this button again, making sure it's in the uh, little window here. I'm going to push this button right here, which is my invert button, and it inverts the mask so that way you get the opposite. This is why keyboard shortcuts are really, really helpful because you can work extremely fast. I use these pretty much every time that I'm editing a photo, uh, even on live streams, if you ever find, or any of my editing videos, if you ever find like things are just happening and you're like, Chris, what did you click? Well, I was probably using a keyboard shortcut because that's the way that um, I like to work on my photos. So now that you kind of have an idea of what keyboard shortcuts can do for you, let's go ahead and take a look at how you can set them up. And it's actually quite simple. So I'm just going to close out this photo because I don't really need that edit. And we're going to come up here to edit and then keyboard shortcuts. So as I mentioned before, I have every single uh, window that you can modify. <clears throat> I have that already uh, expanded. So that way it's easier for us to kind of just go through these. And they're broken down in sections and there are quite a few sections. All right. So the top one is modules. These are all of your basic modules. So browse, develop, effects, local adjustment, all of that. These are default. If you don't see reset over here on the right hand side, that means that on one defaults to having it set up that way. So you can start using these keyboard shortcuts right now. But let's say I don't really care for resize AI to be mapped to the letter Y. I can double click in there and I can change it to the letter L and then it'll reset. 
And because the letter L has already been mapped to something else, I get this dialog box that says the keyboard shortcut L is currently used for the blur mask. All right. Now, if you don't use the blur mask or at least a keyboard shortcut for the blur mask, but you need the letter L to be mapped to your uh, resize AI, then yeah, go for it. Otherwise, I would recommend hitting cancel because if you do use that, then you may want to change this to something like, uh, we'll go with period. Let's see if period is being used for anything. Nope. So now, whenever I go into, uh, you know, I'm in browse, I hit period, should open up resize AI for that photo. It's thinking itself through right now. While it does it, I'm going to sip some coffee. Okay. And here we are inside of resize AI for this particular photo. I hit the letter period on my keyboard. So you can set this up however you want and, you know, really make the experience of on one, whatever you want it to be. Now, I personally do not care to have period set to that because I'll mess around and hit period and uh, mess something up. But if you ever find yourself hitting something on the keyboard and then something opens and you're like, whoa, why did that happen? It's probably because you have a keyboard shortcut set up and that's what is coming through on your particular device. So those are the module setups. And, you know, if you're watching this stream and you have the ability to kind of follow along in your own version of on one, I highly recommend you open it. Uh, the good news is the shortcuts menu has not changed since they released it. So I think they released it in on the 2022 version of on one. So you should be able to follow along uh, regardless of what version of on one, as long as you have one of those earlier or later versions, right? So, um, or more recent versions, 2022, 23, and now 24. Uh, now, we get into the develop section and these are all of the sliders that are in the develop section. I personally don't use these. However, if you know that you are constantly jumping to modify blacks and whites, because maybe you are a black and white artist and or monochrome artist, whatever you want to call it, and you need to jump to these particular features every single image, well, it may be worth noting what the keyboard shortcut is, which on a Mac is going to be option Y on a PC, it'll be alt Y or U uh, for blacks, right? So that's something I should rec uh, should preface. If you see this weird looking T icon, I don't know what to really call it. If you see that, that is the option keyboard. That means alt on a Mac. And if you see this little, I don't know what to call it, four leaf clover, that's what we'll call it. I don't know what to call it. That's called the command key on the Mac. That's going to be the control key on the PC. And I'll do my best to kind of point that out. But if you do see that while we're going through the stream and you're like, Chris, what is that key? Because I'm on a PC and that looks very different than... I will do that. Uh, I'll explain that, but I'll do my best at least. So uh, bottom line, knowing what keyboard shortcuts you have available to you is very important if you know that you use something on a regular basis. All right. Now, moving away from the develop section, because uh, this is where I think the keyboard shortcuts really start to shine through, so to speak. And these are the tools. All right. If you caught the stream yesterday, you would have seen that all of the tools have been combined, at least in uh, the 2024 version, they've been combined to a single drop down, which is is good, like the masking tools, I should say. Masking tools have been combined to a single drop down. And I actually like that. Uh, however, if you want to jump straight to a particular tool, it is very handy to know what keyboard shortcut opens up that particular tool. Now, again, I have these mapped to my Elgato. So for me, I have an icon on my Elgato. 
Uh, in fact, let me see if I can just kind of pull up the Elgato screen here so you can see what I'm talking about. So this is the uh, Stream Deck Elgato software where you go and configure all your keyboard shortcuts. As you can see across the top here, I have all of my masking tools. So if there's a particular masking tool, minus the luminosity mask, but the masks that I actually paint in, I have all of those tools with icons across the top here. And all I did to do make these is I took a screenshot with my uh, computer and then I put this into Affinity Photo, resized them, and there you go. I have little thumbnails for my Elgato. Really easy to do. If you got questions, like if you have an Elgato and you're like, Chris, how did you make your own custom uh, little thumbnails for your Elgato? Uh, please let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to help out because it's fairly simple. Uh, now, some of these are actually presets, like these items here are actually from a different uh, Elgato preset pack, but completely free. I'm not trying to make this about the Elgato, but this is a key tool in my development of using uh, keyboard shortcuts, all right? Now, with that being said, we have all of these uh, shortcuts mapped across the top here, so I know what I'm actually going to activate when I activate it. And then all these other shortcuts along the sides here. Now, I have realized I don't use these three tools all that often. So I'm getting ready to redo this entire plate because I don't really care to use the push tool, the bloat tool, or the pinch tool as much as I used to, um, or at least as much as I thought I would. Uh, I think I've used it maybe four times the entire time since it's been released. Uh, let me know in the comment section if you use the uh, push, bloat, or pinch tools inside of On1. But one of the tools that I always use is the export tool. Now, if I go back one page, this is kind of like my splash page. Whenever I uh, activate On1, this is the thing that opens up for me and this gets me to the browse module, the compare module, and the film strip. So that way, if I need to do something before I start editing, I, I like to think of this as my pre-edit page. Um, and I'm still building this out, finding the keyboard shortcuts that will help me move faster. And that's kind of the idea of keyboard shortcuts. They help you move faster. And then, of course, I have create a version, new album. And then if I'm going to make a pano or an HDR, then I have those as well. So when I select the images, I just push the button. This is extremely helpful, especially if you don't like the new user interface and on one photo raw 2024, you can map these to a keyboard shortcut and then you just push the button and you don't even have to go looking for that particular thing. That's that is truly the power of using keyboard shortcuts. So I'll go back into my editing uh, file here and I'll just close this out because uh, we don't need that open anymore. But I wanted to kind of show you how things can be set up so you get an idea of what you can do. Uh, there is some imagination that you have to have of what do you use frequently. Those are the tools that I knew that I was always clicking on. And I said, OK, I'm going to save myself a click. And I'll set this up onto my Elgato. And how do I do that? I come into the keyboard shortcut window here. And then I go down the line and I mask, or I'm sorry, I map all of these keyboard shortcuts here onto my Elgato. All right. Uh, with that being said, some things like the crop tool, that's the letter C. That makes sense in my brain. I'm always using the crop tool. The letter C is pretty close to the bottom, of, or it's actually at the bottom of the keyboard, at least on an American standard keyboard. So my left hand is naturally in that area. I can just push the letter C. I don't map things that are fairly easy to remember. Um, everything else, though, like Super Select AI, that's the letter K. So I do use that from time to time. And then 
the refine brush. Now, I didn't use the refine brush before 2023.5, and now I almost use it, or I use it frequently as the uh, selection tool for um, the encircling tool. I use it as the encircling tool, and that is extremely, extremely helpful for me because I love to select certain aspects of the image. And one of the things about on one is it can be very hands on with the AI or you can direct the AI on what it needs to pay more attention to. I used to be a huge fan of the original quick mass tool, and I still am kind of for like larger selections. Um, but what I'm finding is between the encircling tool, which is located in the refine brush. If you're not familiar with this, I have a whole video on the encircling tool on the, on my channel. So, uh, if you're curious, like, Hey, what is Chris talking about with this whole encircling tool? Go find that video. I recommend that video because I do kind of break that down. Um, as well as the original quick mask, I have that available as well. Uh, because masking is one of those things, if you don't fully understand it or even start to try to understand it, then you'll find using photo software like this a little frustrating and sometimes, uh, cumbersome, but I promise you masking's easy. I'm off my soapbox about masking back on the, uh, keywords, I'm sorry, keyboard shortcuts. Uh, anyhow, choosing whatever keyboard shortcut you find available or interesting to you, that's what you want to map to uh, your peripheral, your external device, whatever you want to call it, or just memorize them. That's also a, an option, right? Less expensive option too. Now we have tool options here, and these are actually pretty uh, handy when we start talking about the brush itself. And if you recall on my Elgato, I did have these uh, brush increment, uh, there it is, increment brush size, in increase and decrease. I don't know why it's increment brush size, it should just be increase or decrease or uh, reduce, whatever, but whatever. These are the bracket keys. This is a common practice in pretty much all of the photography software out there. So I'm not going to get into that. Um, but just know that you do have some keyboard shortcuts that you can map there. Now we get into the menus and this is where I think it really does differ with what it is you like to do or what it is that you want to see for your keyboard shortcuts. All right. So if you are constantly working on pieces that require canvases, you may want to memorize the command in option. So that way, or control in, so that way you can open up your new canvas and then add photos to it. This is really popular if you are doing collages or composites, all right? Think of this almost like a Photoshop canvas where you put the photos onto it and then you start manipulating them and uh, the canvas doesn't really change, but you're changing the size of the photos. Then we have the browse folder, and this is the folder where you are um, browsing to essentially it's going to find that folder for you. I don't really use that because over here in browse, I just kind of scroll through and find what I'm looking for. Uh, what I do use is this manage extras. And that's something I go to frequently. I have a keyboard shortcut of control E on a PC. I don't think there's an equivalent because control on a Mac is an additional, uh, keyboard item, but I think control and alt might be the correct keyboard shortcut there. I don't know. Someone with a, with a PC, please correct me in the comment section, uh, for everyone else who has that question, but I do go to manage extras quite, quite often. 
All these other ones I don't really use. Um, I do use the export one just because I like to get my images out of on one. But I created this export uh, keyboard shortcut, and I use this almost every time that I'm done with an edit and I want to export it. I just push the button uh, on my Elgato, and it brings up the export module. And sometimes it's already on the setting that I need. So all I have to do is click export and it goes. So that is very, very handy. And then on uh, on Mac, command and Q, that's a common quit function uh, to close an application. So whatever that is equivalent on a PC, which I'm not familiar with, uh, you can set something like that up. Uh, actually, I would be interested in knowing if you use a Windows computer, do you have this option in your keyboard shortcuts for exit under under the menu and file settings? Do you have a keyboard shortcut that you can uh, fix to quit on one photo raw? Because this is just a common practice on Mac, but it'd be interesting to know if that's something that you also have on Windows. Then we have the edit uh, menu, right? So we're really just going across the top here. And I'm going to go through these a little bit quicker because uh, there's nothing all that exciting. You just have to choose what is it that you use out of these menus and then come find the keyboard shortcut. If it's missing one, then you add one. That's It's that simple, all right? But what I will get through, if you create albums, you have the option, or I'm sorry, if you use albums, then you have the option to make a keyboard shortcut for creating albums. I do use this, and I use this uh, quite frequently. It just depends on the project that I'm working on, but I do use it quite regularly. Then we have layers. If you don't work in layers, just bypass this, uh, because I know that not everyone uses the layer options that we have inside of On One. And that's OK. Don't worry about it if you if you don't use it. And then we have the rating tools. And if you don't use on one as your digital asset manager or your photo catalog, then maybe these don't really matter. But if you do use on one as your digital asset manager or your photo catalog, then knowing these keyboard shortcuts at least these ones right here, like, dislike, and clear, are probably going to help you uh, because the like is just going to put the little heart. It's going to fill in the little heart. Dislike is going to put the little X. And then clear is going to make the heart go uh, completely empty, so to speak. So very important that you at least understand where those items are. And if you need to change those, and you can. If you uh, don't know what keyboard shortcuts trigger which item, then this is a good place to come and find that information. We'll close the photo because there's nothing else that I think is of value to discuss for the string purposes. Then we have the masking. And this is where I set up that whole reset, copy, and paste for the mask. There's some really small icons and this is the reason why I prefer the Elgato, because that layer property thing, it doesn't really bother me anymore uh, because I'm using keyboard shortcuts. I realized that uh, about two days ago that the reason I have kind of overcome the UI, so to speak, is because I'm using keyboard shortcuts and that's not something that many people are using and not everyone has an Elgato or a tour box. So I understand that I am probably an anomaly, uh, but maybe that is something to consider picking up. If that's something you, uh, if you want to move a little bit quicker and on one, uh, same thing with the creating the luminosity mask. I have all of these set up and as you can see, these were not set up by default because the reset option is over here on the right hand side of the toolbar uh, or I'm sorry of the command menu so you got to set those up now the one that I really enjoy oh, didn't mean to do that the one that I really enjoy 
setting up is this red overlay and this grayscale overlay. These are those two things that I was showcasing yesterday in the stream where the red overlay helps you see what you're painting and where you're painting. The grayscale overlay lets you see how your mask is really uh, affecting or blending onto the overall image. Both are really, really important, and it can be cumbersome to go down to that bottom menu, click the chevron, and change it. Having a keyboard shortcut just makes it so much easier for me to jump between the two. And, you know, yesterday I was showcasing that aspect of using, I'm sorry, showcasing the aspect of using the menu button to click and do all that. But when I'm editing, I'm really just using the buttons on my Elgato to jump between the two. <clears throat> okay, so let me go ahead and minimize that. And now we have some settings in here. And again, I'm not gonna go through all of these, but I will say, consider making a save settings preset, all right? Or I'm sorry, save settings as preset. The reason, if you find something that really, really works for you and you're like, man, I love this particular style on an image, you want to save that as a preset, even if you never use it again, right? I guess there's some, uh, even if you don't know the next time you'll use it, I'll put it like that. Uh, save the preset because what I think on one is doing, and I got to go and confirm this with on one, uh, based off of the presets that you create, that's where they're really starting to look to see what is your style for this type of image. And it helps that AI style. But aside from that, even if it's not helping with the AI style generation, what it does help you with is you can literally put this on any image later on down the line. And it's okay if you like create, you know, my custom presets, create a folder for that or a category. That's what it's actually called. Create a category for my custom presets, drop every single preset that you ever make inside of there. Like if you really, really fall in love with a style and you're like, man, this could really look good on some images later down the line. I don't know what I'm going to use it. I definitely recommend having a keyboard shortcut that allows you to save those really quickly and you can upload those into that folder that I just mentioned. All the other things you got to figure out uh, what works best for you. The copy and paste of the settings. This is actually uh, not a new feature because this has been in on one photo raw for quite some time. Um, but being able to take settings from one image and paste it across a series of images is another way of working in batches. So something to consider, especially if the folder, the photo is inside of a different folder uh, with the new Chrome trail system. This does work out a little bit differently, but I'll leave that alone. And now we're getting into, you know, some less attractive things. Uh, the show focus mask, I don't use that. Most of these are just things that I personally use. Um, so it looks like we do have a feature inside of the Windows PC uh, for the keyboard shortcut. It is uh, control Q to quit on one. Thank you for, uh, for confirming that. I really appreciate that. Uh, I don't like to make this like a one-sided option uh, because I do use Mac computers. I have a PC, but it's nowhere near powerful enough to even think about putting on one on it. Uh, so that's kind of just a paperweight now. But um, with that being said, I don't want this to be one of those uh, streams or channels where I only focus on the Mac version. So I appreciate when anyone chimes in and says, hey, this is what it's like on a PC, uh, because I realize that different operating systems could have different overall uh, features or 
keyboard shortcuts, things of that sort. Um, anyhow, the view options here, not anything worth going over uh, for keyboard shortcuts because, you know, this could be a fairly stale topic. And hopefully, if you have never looked at the keyboard shortcuts, this is something where you're like, okay, thank you. I now have an idea of what I can do inside of on one. So that way I can get a quick edit in. Um, all this otherwise is, you know, look at it, see what you, what you like and what you don't. Now, once you have gone through and you've made your edits on every one of these modules, the way that you want, you got your keyboard shortcuts mapped. You need to save your keyboard or your keyboard shortcut style. I already have mine. I labeled it FWP keyboard, but all you would have to do after you make all your changes is hit save new style, label it, whatever you want. And then it'll pop up as a option here. I really don't need that many styles of keyboard shortcuts because, uh, I just don't need it. If you need to use more than one, you can obviously have more than one. If you, for whatever reason, are like, you know what? I want to go back to the default keyboard style. Well, you just click default. Now, this big summarize button is actually kind of cool, but I feel like on one missed an opportunity here of getting keyboard shortcuts between versions, right? I had to come back in, when I went from 2023 to 2024, I had to remap all of my keyboard shortcuts. That's kind of frustrating, uh, but it's fairly simple. You know, I kind of walked you through how to do that. And I did most of that in about 15 to 20 minutes. So it wasn't like a very long time frame, but I still had to do it. So what does this summarize button do? Well, when you click it, it's going to take you to your file system, ask you where you want to save it. Now, I already saved it. So let me minimize really quickly. Let's close that out and I'll show you what it does. So it generates an HTML file and I realize you can't see my desktop icons, but I promise you there's stuff on my desktop. It's an HTML file. Here is what it generates. And this is actually kind of cool if you um, need this for whatever reason. It's kind of cool to have available to you where you know all of your keyboard shortcuts and what their mappings are, what they're assigned to, and then anything that doesn't have a keyboard shortcut. So, you know, as I scroll through here, I can kind of look at this and say, okay, what do I, what are my keyboard shortcuts? And you could share this with someone. Um, I debated on sharing this with the community, but what I don't want to do is, you know, say like, oh, well, you should set up your keyboard shortcuts like mine. And then you don't actually have like an Elgato or something that holds all of those shortcuts for you, so to speak and allows you to quickly uh, use them. So that's the whole reason why I don't think I will share them. But that is, in a nutshell, the keyboard shortcut rundown. And I know that this was a fairly dry topic overall, but the idea here was to kind of explain how you can change shortcuts because a lot of people miss that menu inside of on one. And I've also heard a lot of people that are like, Hey, I don't even know what I should be considering for shortcuts or how to use shortcuts or how I can include them into my workflow. Uh, I didn't demonstrate that in this particular video, uh, or live stream, I should say, but it is something that you can do and you should do as far as getting faster at editing. Uh, now this isn't getting faster for the sake of, you know, like a one click edit type deal. It's more so that you don't have to go searching for different tools 
because they're available to you at your fingertips or at least a keyboard shortcut away, which keeps you in the creative process a lot, a lot longer. And you can come up with things because, you know, there's times when I sit and I'm like, man, what am I going to do to this photo? Now with keyword AI, it's a little bit easier. I'm sorry, uh, Brilliance AI. It's a little bit easier for me to kind of imagine what I could do with a photo because I don't have to focus on the exposure aspect of it as much. I just hit Brilliance AI. It exposes the photo pretty decent. And then I just have to fine tune how that exposure is coming through. And then I can jump right into the effects and start stylizing my overall image. Um, and then with the whole AI style settings or the on one recommendations for styles, it all just kind of comes together seamlessly. And that's what I'm enjoying the most about using Photo Raw 2024. So let me know in your comments down below what you think about keyboard shortcuts. Do you use them? Is it something that you find valuable? If it is, let me know how you're using them. And if you have never used keyboard shortcuts a day in your life, I challenge you to go and use them. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and end the stream. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And until next time, I want you to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.